These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. Mate, this is good cooking. This is terrific cooking. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. The ice cream is really nice and subtle. It's a delicious pudding. Cooking doesn't get better than this. We're nearing the end of professional MasterChef, and only the three best chefs remain. With the title in sight, they are about to be pushed to the limit of their creativity, skill and determination. At the Royal College of Physicians, they will have to reproduce classics created by legendary chefs for the people who inspired them. Then they must design their own signature dishes in honour of the people who have influenced them most. It's really important for me to win this competition. It's a massive step in taking my career to the level that I want to get to. Being here has been amazing. I have to say, I don't really want it to end because the, just the opportunities, the experiences we're getting is unbelievable. I think this competition's gone so much further than I ever thought it would. It's getting so much tougher than I ever thought it would. And the competition I'm up against, these guys are producing perfection. Regent's Park in the heart of London is the Royal College of Physicians. The college was created in 1518 by Royal Charter of King Henry VIII in order to license those who were qualified to practice medicine. Over the centuries, college fellows have included doctors who have changed the course of history. It's an institution founded on the values of advancement, innovation and merit. Welcome to the Royal College of Physicians, the oldest medical college in England. Fellows of the college have been dining here for hundreds of years. Tonight, you will be cooking a three-course menu that has stood the test of time. Classics for the president of the college. Off you go. Working in an unfamiliar kitchen, they will each be responsible for one course for the president and his guests. Preparing the starter is 28-year-old Steve. Cooking for the president of an esteemed college is a massive amount of pressure. I think it's going to have to be absolutely perfect. Throughout the competition, Steve has shown technical flair and creativity with some highly original combinations. This is cooking of the highest order. Wow, that is truly creative. But sometimes he puts his experimental vision above flavoursome food. Some people would say this is creativity gone too far. And he struggled under pressure. That's five minutes behind. It means the whole crew is behind. It means the whole service collapsed. It means you die. Timing is crucial. Today, he is cooking the starter of black truffle soup with a puff pastry top. This famous soup was invented in 1975 when the legendary chef Paul Bocuse tried to create the perfect dish for the French president, Valérie Giscard d'Estaing. The dish requires the meticulous clarification of the consommé to make it perfectly clear. Truffles are then added. It is essential that the soup is then cooled, so when it's covered with the pastry, it rises enough to form its famous dome. 
The pièce de résistance is the truffle aroma, which should explode out when the pastry top is broken. It's not your basic run-of-the-mill soup. It's a nice consommé. Obviously, if I cook it too hard with the egg whites in it, it's all going to go cloudy and it's going to be an absolute disaster. So I have to make sure I get it absolutely spot on first time. A private chef with 12 years' experience, Marianne is cooking the main course. It's a big pressure to be in these surroundings, you know, carrying on the legacies of these classic dishes. Marianne has presented some exceptional food. Clearly you have to know what you're doing, and Marianne does. Um, I think this is lovely. But she struggles with some of her cooking techniques. First thing, your quail is undercooked. There is one minute missing on this one, so put it back in the oven. Keep your mind on the pigeon. OK. <laughs> Today, she will recreate the historic dish of herbed saddle of lamb. This recipe is a favorite of the college and has been served there for centuries. The trick is in the balance of flavors, and Marianne has to select the herbs from the college's own medicinal gardens. I'm feeling really inspired about what I'm going to cook. I've just been in the garden and some really fantastic herbs out, so I'm very excited. I've got to get the balance of the herbs right. 27-year-old Daniel is cooking the dessert. These guys are going to be expecting fine dining. They know exactly what they're looking for. And when it comes to the classic dishes, they're, they're going to be scrutinising every move and making sure everything is perfect. Daniel has proved he has the talent to really stand out. Very well cooked sole. It's moist. It's beautiful. But he makes small errors and can be hit and miss with his puddings. Uh, it is really disappointing. Half of this pastry is completely undercooked. You find that that's of the rules anyway? Not really. Where you are? That's fine enough. So the garden was not really full of roses. Not really. No. Today he will be making a peach melba. This dessert was created over a hundred years ago by the founding father of modern cuisine, Auguste Escoffier, in honor of the opera singer Dame Nellie Melba. Creating a faultless classic dessert will be the ultimate test of Daniel's skill. He will need to perfect the five highly technical components, smooth vanilla ice cream, a tweel biscuit, a raspberry coulis, and a delicate sugar basket to sit on top of a poached peach. There's a lot of pressure involved in this, um, especially because pastry isn't my strong point. Um, I'm feeling the pressure a little bit more than I would have if I'd been on the starter or the main. With two and a half hours to prepare their recipes, the chefs get underway. Steve will be first to serve the physicians and begins preparing the consommé base for the black truffle soup, originally created for a president. Steve, you understand the recipe? Yeah, I think so. Is there anything in particular you're worried about, Steve? Obviously, the consommé is, is the one that, if I cook it too hard, then it's going to ruin it completely. And the puff pastry top? The puff pastry top, I'm, I'm confident I can get right, but... That could be a sticking point. We want each and every soup puffed up, lovely balloon shaped on the top. Yep. Not a flat cap, it has to be a big balloon. Okay. Okay, Steve, get going. Thank you. To make the perfect consommé, the soup base has to be brought just about to boiling temperature. If it boils too hard, the soup will end up being cloudy. It has to be crystal clear. Marianne has decided to take the lamb off the bone and begins preparing it with the herbs she's selected. Right, Marianne, do you understand this recipe? Yes, Chef. What are you going to do to make it really special? I'm going to uh, be very uh, sophisticated with the use of herbs. I'm thinking along the lines maybe some uh, capers and anchovies. I'm not sure that capers and anchovies would have always been on the dish, so I'd maybe like to um, provide a kind of modern approach to it. In the past, you've given us some severely undercooked meat. That's definitely not going to happen today. It's going to be cooked to perfection, Chef. Marianne has to deliver perfectly cooked lamb, well seasoned, beautifully presented. They've been serving roast lamb for hundreds of years and they have extremely high expectations. Daniel's begun by carefully preparing the creme anglaise for his ice cream before putting this on to churn. 
he also gets to work on his delicate tweel biscuits. Pastry is not your strong point. It's not. You're right. Sugar work. Have you ever done any? I've done little bits of sugar work, but it's asking for a sugar basket, which is something I've never actually tried before. Big elephant hands don't really go well with sugar work, I don't think. This is a great classic. Peach Melba was invented by Escoffier. This presentation has let him down in the past, but he needs to be precise here. After an hour of preparation, the pressure is on Steve. I expect it to be clear, Steve. Don't let me down, huh? No, chef. The success of his dish rests on his consommé. He needs to carefully strain it to remove the impurities. That is like liquid gold. Steve's consommé is perfectly clarified, but he still needs it to cool before he can put the pastry on top of it. Steve has now got that chilling, but he has got 45 minutes to get that soup on the pass to the customers. It has to be bang on time. We can't afford any slip-ups. Uh, a bit up against it, because I need to get all this garnish into the bowl, ready to go, because I need to get them in the oven before 20 to 7, so a bit of a push on now. And we're doing it for time, Steve? Uh, probably running a couple of minutes over, actually. I need these in the oven now. You are going to have to move your backside. Come on, keep it going. Yes, sir. Don't drop them. As he rushes to get the soup in the oven, he faces an anxious wait to see if the pastry rises. Marianne, 7.45, aren't they eating the main? Quarter to seven, that gives it 15 minutes rest. Don't ask me. I don't, don't. <laughs> Sorry, I don't... don't ask me. Marianne has suddenly got a bit of doubt in her mind. This is a simple dish. She should be able to roast a piece of lamb perfectly. But she's looking at the time, and I'm worried. It's crucial she works out the cooking and resting times for the lamb correctly. I do find this sort of butchery quite challenging. I'm just nervous as usual. <laughs> I just cut myself. Carry on. Go. Thank you. Put that on. Thanks. Marianne can't afford to be flustered. She has cut herself and she is now looking a little bit frayed at the edges. Finally, she gets her lamb in the oven and can focus on her boulangere potatoes, which must be finely sliced and cooked in a stock. With 20 minutes to service, the president of the college arrives with his guests, some of the most esteemed dignitaries of the medical world. Well, I brought together a group of colleagues tonight uh, to discuss an important topic. We normally do dine very well, so the contestants have a lot to live up to because our own chef here is of the, of the highest quality. In the kitchen, Daniel has blanched his peaches, but he's having problems taking the stones out. Have you poached those peaches? Yes. They've been poached in the syrup or just blanched? Blanched in the syrup to take the skins off. But they're not cooked yet? No. Wait. Penny's not dropping, is it? Not really, no. Not really. The peach has to be cooked. If they were cooked, you would not have a problem getting the stones out. Come on, get cracking. Yes, chef. Back in the sugar syrup Wait. to poach. This is supposed to be a cold dessert as well, huh? So Wait. you better get moving. The guy has made a real fundamental error. They're not cooking the peaches enough. This is a small mistake, but it could be cataclysmic. Daniel's not the only one having problems. With just 15 minutes to go, Steve is waiting for the pastry tops on his soup to rise. <laughs> I'm devastated, to be honest. This, uh, half of them are just falling in. I know maybe the uh, paste is too thin. I don't know. How are we looking? Shocking. Oh. Oh dear. Very oh dear. Oh. You've only got three soups. Yeah. Only three with the top on. Ah. Uh. 
pastry collapsed for two reasons. Puff pastry was a little thin, and secondly, it wasn't cold enough to set the puff pastry on there, so it was already melting before it got into the oven. Steve must now make four separate new pastry tops. Basically, I need to get some more tops on so that they will all have a top on when I come to serve them. Disaster, really. Steve, we're going to be late, aren't we? Yes, Chef. How many tops do you need? I'm doing four. We are running now ten minutes late, so your main course will be running ten minutes late as well. OK, Chef. It's gone seven o'clock and the president and his guests are seated. Steve's got a disaster on his hand. They can't be served. He's going to have to fish out the pastry that's collapsed in the soup and replace that with a top. It's not going to be perfect by far. I just hope it's going to be presentable. I think that's gone. Good. At last, he gets his soup out. 14 minutes late. Steve has cooked black truffle soup with puff pastry, which was created by legendary chef Paul Bocuse for the French president in 1975. I really worked out the puff pastry because mine's falling in and going soggy. If I have to be critical, the, the, the dome of the pastry has gone a bit flat. It's now lost its domed shape, sort of a bit reminiscent of a frisbee, perhaps. I thought the consomme was really nice. It was certainly clear. Well, I would rate it very highly. I think it's Ooh. really good flavour. It's nice and light, so <laughs> a very nice way to start a meal. I'm pleased that the soup, which was the main part of the dish, was a success, but at the same time, I'm disappointed that it wasn't perfect and it didn't have that wow factor that when you break through that pastry, you get that aroma of the soup coming up at you. Marianne is up next with her interpretation of the college's historical lamb dish. OK, Marianne, they've cleared. Go for it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, time, huh? come on, we said 5-2, let's go. Quick, 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 chop, chop. Come on, Marianne, come on. Marianne has made one of the college's historical dishes, saddle of lamb, served with beans, carrots and boulangere potatoes, with the addition of her own choice of herbs and capers. Gosh, that looks, looks lovely. Mm. And these are the herbs from the college garden, I presume. It is quite pink, and it's quite pink all the way through, which yes. makes me worry a little bit that it's not quite as well done as it could be. And this looks just right mm. for me. The middle of my lambs is a bit too pink for me. Mm. I think the garden herbs are excellent. The capers are a bit sharp and mm. strong for the lamb. It certainly are a strong taste, and much stronger mm. than everything else on the plate, but I think it goes well. But you'll have to do a day's work, really, before you eat a meal like this, because yeah. it's quite a heavy meal. Mm. I agree, it is a hearty meal, but one probably that Henry VIII would have approved of. Sort of between <laughs> wives, as it were. Had I known that they wanted the lamb medium to well and another one to pink, obviously I would have cooked that to order, so that was a slight shame. However, I think they've genuinely really liked everything. So the peaches have now been cooked? Peaches are now cooked, Chef, yeah. Nice and tender? Tender, all the way through. Good. Just waiting for them to cool. Daniel now needs to perfect the delicate sugar baskets. Daniel's cooked his caramel and he's starting to spin the caramel around the ladle. I do hope he doesn't do it too thick. It has to be nice and thin. You have to be able to see through it. Having successfully spun his sugar baskets, he now must plate up all five components. Perfect presentation. Chef. Just how Escoffier would have liked it. Oh, chef. Don't lose focus. Come on, keep it neat. 
quick, Daniel. That first one is melting. Come on, go. quick. In the dumb waiter. Nice and straight, gently. I'm really happy with the execution of the dish. I've just done it. It's quite a technical dish in the sugar work and the twill baskets and the ice cream. I just really hope the guys upstairs appreciate the amount of effort that I've put into it. Daniel has made a peach melba, originally created by the great Escoffier for Dame Nellie Melba. Poached peach with vanilla ice cream in a twill biscuit and a raspberry coulis. So this is what a tulip basket looks like. Very nicely presented. Did good enough to eat. Well, some. Absolutely delicious. Mm. The whole thing I thought was a wonderful combination. Pudding was really quite exceptional. I think the empty plates say it all, don't they? Yeah. The peach melba, I, I think we've all agreed, was, was outstanding. It was the pinnacle of the meal. I got fantastic comments and it's the first time so far in the competition. I've had 10 out of 10. It's just such a fantastic feeling. And for a dessert as well, that, that's, that's just made my day, basically. of you. I was a little anxious. Uh, we have a lot of people come through this college and they're entertained to a very high standard. It all came together in, in a really good night. We're proud that you've done Henry VIII behind you. Very proud. Thank you. I think our chefs have done well. They have delivered the goods, really flavoursome food, well presented. However, there were a few mistakes. Steve, unfortunately, cracked under the pressure. His pastry lids were a disaster. I made a mistake today, so it's all got to be felt free from now on. It's, I'm going to get in the studio tomorrow and, and cook like a demon. Marianne gave us really flavoursome roast lamb. It was ever so slightly underdone, but it was pink enough for me to eat, and I do like pink lamb. I feel like all of us have grown so much in this competition. It's just going to be getting better and better and better. I've got a lot more to show them. Dan, he professes not to be a pastry chef, but today, wow, that dessert had so much flavour. Today, I've just had great feedback and it's, it's just going to spur me on so much to go on and win this competition now. It's just given me a massive boost of confidence. It's day two. And Marianne, Steve and Daniel are back at MasterChef HQ. For today's task, we're asking you to cook two dishes. Dishes that have been inspired by someone you admire and someone close to you. Great chefs use memories for inspiration. We want to taste those memories on the plate. The finalists now have one hour and 20 minutes to cook their two dishes. Now I've actually got to the standards and achieved what I wanted. I think I've just got to prove I can keep that standard. Daniel, could you tell us what you're cooking and what has inspired it? I'm doing a fish course today, which is seared mackerel with a wild garlic pom puree, sunblush tomato pesto and asparagus. And I'm also doing a dessert, which is going to be a banana souffle with chocolate sorbet and caramel sauce. Who has inspired these dishes? Inspiration for me today has been um, Lance Armstrong. He's inspired me a lot throughout my life. My granddad is actually suffering from cancer, so he's helped me get through the tough times, basically. The reason behind the dishes is these things have all been clinically proven to contain anti-cancerous cells. And then obviously for Lance Armstrong to go on and fight the battle he did and get seven consecutive Tour de France's takes a lot of hard work and a lot of energy to do that. So the dessert I'm doing today is a very, very high energy dessert. What influence did your grandfather have on your career? I was always stuck for lifts. I didn't drive, I couldn't get to work. I was always there to give me a lift to work. He was a real inspiration for me and he helped me a lot throughout, throughout the start of my career. You're gonna 
pedal your way clear of the pack. <laughs> let's hope so, let's hope so. For me, this is just me pouring my heart out onto the plate, showing how much my family mean to me. And I just really hope that the passion comes through in my dishes today. He's bringing together healthy food. Mackerel is really a very pungent, flavoursome fish. And so is sun blush tomatoes. I'm not too sure those two will combine well. You've had half an hour already. 30 minutes gone. I want everything to be perfect and I don't want Greg or Michelle to pick up on anything negative. I want them to be, you know, flying the flag. Today I'm picking Artichokes Antonia, a dish based on Lady Antonia Fraser. She's a writer. She was married to Harold Pinto. I cooked her 75th birthday. Could you tell me what Artichoke Antonia is? Yes, it's a souffle made from artichokes. And then on the side I'm going to have a little bit more f intensely flavoured puree with some bay on ham. What is your second dish? My second dish is uh, inspired by my closest chef girlfriend. We always go to this very small Thai restaurant. We always have this dish. It's basically raw fish and this amazing dressing. It's like a noak charm, a Vietnamese dressing, but I've elevated the whole thing, hopefully, to Michelin standards. I feel incredibly strongly about them, and I wouldn't want you to think my repertoire was small, but I just really, they're very much part of me. OK, good. It is so difficult to get a souffle just right. It's all about timing and the balance of flavour. It mustn't be too stodgy, but it must pack a punch of flavour. I'm hoping to show them my style finally coming through after years of cooking what other people want. You have 20 minutes left. making mistakes at this stage of the competition because it can be costly and I want to push on and win it. All right, Steve, can you tell us what you're cooking and what is the inspiration behind it? Yep, I'm doing inspired by Keith Floyd, turbot poached in red wine, and then inspired by my mum, I'm doing banana cake with Guinness ice cream, smoked butterscotch sauce and salted walnuts. But I've got to ask how you happen to be inspired by Keith Floyd. I just really enjoyed watching him and he inspired me from an early age, I think. This is a dish created by me, sort of dedicated to Keith Floyd in a way. I mean, one thing that Keith Floyd enjoyed was great flavours, and, and you certainly have got ingredients there that really could explode. Yeah. Your pudding is a banana cake with Guinness ice cream. Yeah. And you're using your mother for inspiration. My mum was always one for sort of sitting down in the afternoon with a cup of tea and a slice of cake. When she was pregnant with me, the only thing that would quench her first in the evenings was a small glass of Guinness. These are very fond, happy memories, the pair of them. I like food to have an element of fun. I like it to be a little bit risky. I like to push the boundaries, but above all, I like to put a smile on people's faces. This dish being in honour of my mum is my way of saying thank you. I don't really show a lot of emotion on the outside, but I feel I express myself with my food. Now he's got a banana cake. You think, yeah, fine. And Guinness ice cream. If it was anybody else but Steve, I would ask them to be removed from the kitchen. But now I can't wait to see what he is going to serve up. Two minutes. Just two minutes left. Last minute, guys. Last minute. first dish is seared mackerel with garlic mashed potato, sun blush tomato pesto, asparagus and deep fried garlic flowers. Inspired by legendary cyclist Lance Armstrong and Daniel's grandfather Ernest Lennox. I think this really is the most beautiful plate of food that you have presented to us so far. I think you've done your granddad proud here.
Well done. Very bold flavours in there. You've got asparagus, wild garlic, flowers, mackerel, a lot going on that plate, but it works. I think that's a very good dish. Well done. It looks stylish and elegant. It tastes stylish and elegant. I think that's probably about as good as it gets, mate. His second dish is a banana souffle with caramel sauce and a chocolate sorbet. Daniel, again, you've delivered something which is quite beautiful. Presentation-wise, it is top-notch. That's very good. Your ice cream is, is glorious. The souffle, <laughs> great idea to put the peanuts around the, the side there. Gives a little crunch and texture. It is a little bit on the heavy side. Great flavours, but not quite light enough. I think that is an absolute delight. You wanted it to be fun. It's most certainly fun, yet it's still stylish, it's still elegant. Mate, this is good cooking. I mean, this is terrific cooking. If this is your personality, your soul on the plate, then I think we've found a real star. Today's task went extremely well for me today. I managed to put out two dishes of food, which I was really happy with, I was really proud of, and hopefully the, the people that inspired me today, hopefully they're gonna be really proud of it as well. Marianne's first dish is artichoke souffle with a salad of artichoke puree and bayon ham, inspired by the writer Lady Antonia Fraser. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's straightforward presentation, yet elegant. Uh, the souffle looks wonderful as well. Marianne, that is delicious. I love the little salad here. That in itself is a beautiful dish. Lovely flavours, the textures are wonderful. The souffle I find rich. It could have had a little bit more egg white in it to make it more unctuous and lighter. But it's a wonderful, wonderful starter. Artichoke isn't an enormous flavour. And that one just seems to be a little bit cheesy and not a great deal of artichoke. Mmm. Well, that's heavenly. That's a really nice balance. That is lovely. Her second dish is carpaccio of sea bass topped with its crisped skin, lemongrass and edible flowers with a Vietnamese sweet and sour dressing. This dish is inspired by fellow chef and friend Caroline Hall. Right, Marianne, the first thing I see is a lot of dressing there. It really is a swimming pool. Far too much in my view. But I do think it looks incredibly beautiful, this dish. Very, very attractive, very feminine. There's a nice bit of acidity in there. I like the textures as well. The fact you've put some crisped up skin in there is wonderful, but I'm afraid it ends there. The lemongrass is very coarse and sticks in between your teeth. The sea bass, you've left some brown bits in there. The blood vein, which is not particularly the best part of the fish to eat. I just think the execution of it is not quite right. When I'm cooking fish, normally I would always remove that and I, I feel quite cross that I've made that very simple error. I really, really enjoy those flavours. We asked for you to open up and give us a bit of heart and soul. You did. You, you gave us heart and soul of great memories for you. And uh, I think you did those memories proud. Thanks for your comments. What's bothering me most is about the fish, and, and Michelle said the execution of it isn't right. I knew I was taking a risk by serving it because it's not that conventional, and I totally agree with some of his comments, but I wish it had been perfect. Steve's first dish is turbot poached in red wine with baby leeks, bacon sauce, a bow tie of red wine jus, and a glass of 2007 Bordeaux. This dish is inspired by the original celebrity chef, Keith Floyd. 
It's fun. It's great. And I, I really do understand it. I do hope that the cooking skills that you have match this almost, dare I say, frivolity. That's very good. Turbot is one of the few fish that you can poach in red wine. The bacon adds another dimension. There are really lots of gutsy flavors in here. That's a nice dish, really nice dish. It's fun, is in its appearance. Its flavors are that of grown up classic cooking. It's very nice, the fish is cooked to absolute perfection. I think that's a lovely dish. His second dish is banana cake with Guinness ice cream, smoked butterscotch sauce, and salted walnuts, inspired by his mum, Sandra. It looks delicious. Mmm. That's yummy. Very, very yummy. Mm. <laughs> that's, like, that's like a pudding at home kind of yumminess. The banana cake is really soft without being too sickly sweet. The ice cream is really nice and subtle. It's a delicious pudding. I think that's one of the most interesting things I've tasted in a long while because I don't know how I get salty nut and beer flavours yet still get refreshing and still get sweet. I think this is alarmingly clever. Sometimes you are a bit of a mad scientist, sometimes your creations are just sublime and I think you have got it absolutely shockingly right today. Brilliant, thank you. Do you think Mum would be proud when she saw what you've done to her banana cake? She'll be proud just to see me here, so... Over the moon, I think. I feel my way of cooking is to put my personality on a plate, and I'm really over the moon about the feedback I got to get out today as we're, as we're coming towards the end is, is brilliant. Well done. Off you go. Today for me has been the best day so far. Is there no limit to these guys' talents? <sighs> I think Daniel cooked out of his skin today. That was Michelin standard food. I doubted whether he could bring asparagus, tomato, pesto, garlic mash and mackerel all together on one plate. Not only did he bring it together, he brought it together beautifully and with style and elegance. That is the work of a true talent. His banana souffle was delicious. In fact, I could have eaten a big bowl of that. He'd lined the souffle mould with peanuts and they went really nice and crunchy and added another dimension to that souffle. Such a shame it was a bit heavy. He, like Lance Armstrong, has that determination and wants to go all the way. I do feel I can go on and win this competition, but I need to go on and carry on producing perfection because I think from now on this stage it's going to take one little mistake to basically fall out of this competition. Marianne was probably the least successful of the three finalists today but uh, I still found much in her food to admire. I really enjoyed the artichoke salad. I thought that was lovely. That was delicious. It had everything. It had the taste and the texture and it looked really beautiful. I very much enjoyed the souffle, but it wasn't a souffle that was bursting with artichoke flavour. But then artichokes were a very subtle thing. Her other dish of raw sea bass, Asian style or Vietnamese style, looked beautiful and elegant. I think the balance of flavour on that dish was terrific. It did have basic errors, though. The fish was cut too thick, it still had the bloodline on it, and the lemongrass was chopped up far too big. There was something definitely f very feminine about her food today, and I like the lightness of touches, I, I, I really did. This late stage in the competition, and I so want to win it, so everything that's negative you just almost obsess about, but you've got to be obsessed with it to be able to succeed. I thought Steve was great today. 
really great. He poached his turbot in red wine and gave us a really beautiful bow tie made out of reduced sticky red wine on the plate. It tasted fantastic. It was magical. But for me, the absolute triumph was his pudding. He made us a banana cake, Guinness ice cream, butterscotch sauce, but the ice cream tasted slightly of beer. And then we had salty walnuts as well. I thought that was nothing short of amazing. I think Steve is an artist. He has that eye and he has a really creative mind. Coming towards the end of the competition now, I'm starting to really appreciate what winning this competition could mean to me. It would just show me that I do have the ability to get to where I want to be. We are getting very, very close to that final and this couldn't be more exciting and it couldn't be closer. Daniel, who we thought may not last the pace, has actually turned out to be one of the pace setters. In Marianne, we have one of the best classic cooks I've ever seen. I still want to see a little bit more creativity, but no one would argue with the beauty and the clean lines of her classic excellence. Steve is still the wizard, part cook, part scientist. When he gets it right, it is absolutely breathtaking. But that sort of creativity has a brittle edge and he can sometimes go a little too far. We've only got a couple of rounds to go now and the next round is really going to test them like they haven't been tested before. This is really exciting. Any one of our three finalists could make it. Next time, Marianne, Steve and Daniel face the toughest challenge of their professional career, impressing 30 of the world's leading Michelin chefs. Over 40 Michelin stars between them is just terrifying. These guys have got to perform. Everything has to be perfect. I'm not letting anything come between me and the tiara. Don't lose focus, keep it going. I've come this far, whatever it takes to get this food out on tape, I will do it. I've never roasted 18 ducks in one go before, it's a bit of a juggling act. It's not brilliant, is it? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You're going down like a ton of bricks. <sighs> then the competition culminates in one final cook-off. That is a lot of work. That is dreamy if she can get it right. So much can go wrong. This is a major gamble. Only one of them can be crowned this year's champion. They are the little surprises that take it from good to great. I love it. But I'm not bowled over. I am looking for fault here. It is as near as perfection as you can get it. Our professional MasterChef champion is... 